Good morning, guys. What's up? It's a nice, beautiful day today. About 9 a.m. About to go to the gym with Steve. I have some deadlifts on the menu today. Uh, I didn't tell you guys this yet, but uh, about about two weeks ago, uh, I was warming up my deadlifts. I was supposed to do like 530, 530 pounds for like 10 sets of three, and uh, I got to about 495, and I hit this rep, and it kind of strained my lower back a little bit, just a little bit. Um, I had noticed that my glute was a little tight, you know, before even going for that rep uh, while I was warming up my deadlifts, and uh, yeah, something my lower back just kind of, yeah. So I cut off deadlifts for the last about two weeks. Uh, I didn't squat for about half a week or so, and I even when I did, I started slowly bringing that up, and I'm currently slowly bringing up my deadlifts again. Uh, something cool is uh, is that I've been using these shoes right here, which are the Sabo deadlift lifting shoes, uh, really made specifically for deadlifting, um, but really, really, really helpful for sumo deadlifters because of the design and how they made these so that people can push out against it without the shoe just breaking or, um, you know, basically your foot going and falling off of its own sole. That sounded weird, huh? <laughs> but if you guys uh, understand what I'm saying is when you're pushing out to the side, basically with, let's just say a pair of chucks, quite often your foot starts hanging off of the shoe itself. And um, that becomes a problem. That becomes a problem for some people and some shoes. So the cool thing about these is that that doesn't happen. It's also very uh, minimalist in terms of the sole, in terms of uh, how why or how thick it is so these are pretty much give me the same kind of um, thickness feeling that Vibrams do so it feels uh, the same it feels very similar to wearing Vibrams in terms of how thin they are uh, so I've been enjoying these these have been nice um, I'll give you guys like a f official review on these come maybe a week or two when I'm actually you know starting to lift some heavier weights with these but so far they've been doing good you know just walking to and from uh, the car to grocery stores, Chipotle, or grocery shopping, I've used these, and uh, they're nice to walk in. I've done calves and lunges, overhead press, and just an assortment of exercises, and it's it's passed. I give it a thumbs up so far, and I've been enjoying it. So good shoes so far. <laughs> I'll, I'll give the official review later on. Crap, and I almost forgot that. <laughs> I mean. The main thing is that midfoot you got a strap and there's a strap so it could be tied around your leg and your ankle as well. So you could have it easily adjusted with these so that you don't actually have to use the laces to tie it super tight. That way you can just use these straps in terms of tightness and get the perfect fit. I love them. Oh yeah, I've also recently spoiled myself. I got these new pair of Nikes right here and I got a new pair of Nikes right there. They look pretty similar, but they're different. Um, and the pair of Converse Chuck Taylors from earlier, these are high top leather ones. They were really cheap. I think I got these for like 30 or 35 bucks. So I've had to reset myself on the sumo deadlift, which really sucks because that was one thing that I was able to basically increase by 10 pounds every freaking cycle, every single time. So I was working most recently off of a 620, I believe, or maybe 630, um, training max. And, you know, I completed a full training cycle with the 620, or actually, I think this was the last workout, or the time that I kind of strained my lower back was the last workout to complete a full training cycle of either a 620 or 630 training max of my Oga 753 program with the sumo deadlift. Um, and it just sucks that I have to, to kind of reset myself and work my way back up. What I'll probably do is if I you know, decide to keep on doing sumo deadlifts and I decide to keep on progressing at them, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll reset my training max just a little bit, maybe between five and 10%, work my way back up. And then when I get close to the 620 training max, 
on the sumo deadlift, I will slow things down back to original pace or perhaps slightly slower, which may mean um, decreasing uh, the amount that I increase the training ma max by after a, a full successful training cycle. So, hope that makes sense. Here I'm doing 315, or excuse me, 365 for, I think I only, uh, but just three sets of five. And uh, to be honest, like I didn't even feel 100% by this. So I may even have to uh, step back even further from this. Uh, it didn't feel the way it should have in terms of my lower back and my, my glute. Um, and today, which is the day after having w the day after this workout, my my right hip, my right glute area just doesn't feel normal. My left doesn't feel the same way that my right does. So there's something a little bit of something something going on. I may need to uh, reset myself more. And uh, you know, that's just the way it is. I'm definitely lifting for the long run. And it doesn't kill me to do little things like this because there's a compound effect. Um, the more that you neglect the little disciplines that you really should be paying attention to, the worse off um, you are way down the line. It isn't necessarily like the end of this month, you know, I'll pay the price. It's you'll pay a bigger price way down the road that really gets you, that really screws you up. So that's why I always recommend doing the little things to add up and help, such as um, what I just did regarding my sumo deadlift. Things weren't feeling perfect, it kind of strained a little bit, backed off, backed off. So I've been doing a ton of hack squat lately because I haven't been doing much sumo deadlift and I haven't been stiff leg deadlifting, so I've been doing a lot more quad work. Uh, just to uh, transfer that energy and transfer that effort into something else. Just been doing lots of hack squats. And of course, lots of lunges and lots of calf work that I didn't film this day. Post workout Indian. Boom. There's still five shape right here. Boom. Uh, the peach and whatever. The peach and the salt and vinegar chips. That does look fucking bomb. This is like chips and what kind, salsa. Potato. What kind of bread is that? Oh, sure. Thank you. Thank you. The best. <laughs> India oven in Lincoln. This place is bomb. Yeah, is that chicken curry? Chicken, uh, chicken masala. Looks like sweet potatoes. It doesn't it? It's it like, like yeah. I, every time I was like, I almost didn't know it was chicken until I put it in my mouth. Pause. I am feeling Why terrible. Why are you looking at me like that? Hey. Hoping that thing was going. What? You alright, Club? She feels cold. It's probably yeah. the yeah, well, well not cold. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense then. Well, I'm just for yeah, yeah, place. yeah, that makes sense. Hey, good girl. Hey, good girl. So, my parents' house right now, we're gonna take Cookie, my dog, in for a checkup of sorts. Uh, she hasn't been doing too good lately. In fact, over the last few weeks, her health has kind of been declining quite a bit, and she lost a lot of weight. She's really sluggish. You know, she could barely jump on the couch anymore. There she is, right over there. Oh, it's getting nice and cool in here. Yeah, you're being a good girl. You're a good girl. So my dog Cookie is getting a blood test right now. So far the news is looking too good. Uh, she's she's had cancer for a little while and it's been I guess growing quite a bit and uh, they're probably have to do surgery coming up pretty soon. But I think that I have decided we'll probably go through with that, even though it's going to be like 
crazy expensive or not. So we'll probably I'll go through with that. So hopefully you'll we'll feel better soon. Treat you okay. I brought Cook back for a little bit. She's gonna stay yeah. overnight here. You gonna stay overnight? You gonna miss for us? For them to bring her levels back up to normal and do a ton of tests. So. Okay. Hey, babes, we missed you. Yeah. We're gonna take care of you. Today is. Yeah. Today's what? Tuesday? It's the 24th. 23rd. Or the 23rd, yeah. Tuesday. Oh. Hey, Cook. What? Oof, so I'm home. Picked up some uh, Chick-fil-A on the way home. Man, complicated stuff going on with uh, my dog, Cookie. It's kind of sad. Um, it's hard to know what the right thing to do is, you know, with a dog that is... She's at her, you know, her estimated life expectancy in terms of years, you know, 12 and a half. Um, it's about how long Dachshunds or Dotsons or wiener dogs pretty much live and you know, she's having you know health issues this and that um, it, it's it's like hard to know if going through treatments and chemotherapies and surgeries is the right thing to do where they'll be suffering or to just let them kind of just spend more time with you perhaps instead of in the hospitals and stuff or whether the third option of, you know, putting them down is the right thing to do. And it's just like, it's just like, it sucks. It's tough. That's what happens, you know, when your, your pets get older. And, uh, I just want to, want, I, I honestly just want Cookie and my dad to spend as much time with each other as possible because they are just inseparable. What I really want is just her to be, be home, spend time at home with my dad, you know, as long as she's not like in pain and crying and, and all that, you know, that's kind of what I want to happen. But basically what just happened is, um, they did a, uh, like a blood test and they found all these different things that were out of whack and they wanted a hospitalizer for the night. And my dad and I were just hit with this decision right then and there. Like, do we let them hospitalize her for the night? What do we do? Um, and it, it's like you drive home and you're like, shit, did we make the right decision? We don't even know. Um, but, uh, dinner is Chick-fil-A, 12-piece nuggets, uh, large fries, and a spicy chicken deluxe sandwich, a gigantic, um, spinach, carrot, and cherry tomato salad, and then we got some diet soda right there, and I'm watching, uh, Cosmos with, uh, alright, so Cookie stayed overnight at the animal hospital place. Um, and either today or tomorrow, they should be getting some results on some major tests that they're doing. Um, figuring out what's going on and like, oh, I already freaking know that she's going to need some surgery and stuff like that. Uh, well, they're going to recommend some surgery and whatnot, but it's tough to know what to do. You know, obviously there's incredible costs for everything related to, to this, um, but more so it's like, will we even be prolonging her life by going through the surgery? And is it worth the pain that she might be in or might be caused from surgery and recovery and this and that? And these are last days already. So it's like, I don't know. It's almost like, what's the point of surgery and this and that when, when she's done with the surgery, she's going to be in pain and she might not even have any more time to live after the surgery, even uh, with the the help it might do. I don't know, it's tough. What do you guys, what kind of experiences have you guys had with this sort of thing where your dog, you know, you, where you, you had to make a decision in this sort of way? What I do remember is that two years, like a year ago or two years ago, they said that she had cancerous tumors. And this was already when she was, um, shit, like 11 years old. And they were like small and most likely benign, but we didn't, uh, we didn't like do surgery or anything like that. And she, and it's two years since then. And you know, my dog isn't crying or whimpering or anything like that. And I mean, granted she, lately she's been slow, but I don't know. It's tough. It's tough to know. <laughs> like if 
Stuff to know what to do. I don't know. Let me know what you guys uh, have dealt with, you know, in the comments below. Thanks.